just two weeks behind Knox Johnson, he continued eastwards for another lap of the Southern Ocean to save my soul, as he put it. This is the real solo race, sailing like it's 1968. Forcément, tous les gens qui reviendront de Golden Globe Race, forcément, il faut s'attendre à ce qu'ils aient changé. It's a great story and it's the 50th anniversary and it's a great opportunity to relive the original solo sailing when technology wasn't available, where we're just using sextants and uh, wind-up clocks to find your position. And it's really the story of humanity and human endeavour in the extreme. So the world has never seen anything like this event. Well, good day, everybody. From uh, La Sable de Lone, we're finally uh, live again, even though Jane's not here. But guess what? I've got Aida here helping me. <laughs> and uh, unbelievably, about four minutes ago, uh, five minutes ago, everything went blank. We lost a lot because of my 25 euro of uh, uh, SIM card time that I booked into yesterday disappeared because I was watching the Vendee Globe press conference and used it all up. So I'm now hot linked to uh, Aida's uh, phone and we're actually working. So I'm going to bring um bring simon straight in here now and we'll uh, we'll get rolling hey simon how are you hi don um i'm good That's welcome good. to Friday. yeah good to be here so it's actually really warm here right now i mean i know you're a couple hundred miles that way but what's it like because you're tell, where, tell everyone where you are uh i'm up in Brittany, near just up the river blave from lorient and it's 30 degrees here today glorious sunny day Nice wind. We should be sailing. Yeah, exactly. Don't talk about it because I'm waiting for my mini. <laughs> but it's not here yet. <laughs> but anyway, it will be soon and uh, we'll have some fun. So, um, okay, so so you're a sailor. I know that because I know your background. But tell me where it all began for you, you about your family life and, and, and you know how it evolved into sailing for a start. I, I started very young, mucking about in boats, as one should really. And so family yeah. Based down on the Isle of Wight, were in clinker built boats, and then I started sailing at school as well. And and there, really, we were sailing on little uh, reservoirs with concrete sides. So the only thing to do there was race, and so so that was the beginning of of racing, which it carried on through uh, through school and family holidays and uh, university. It became pretty serious, and we did quite a lot of team racing, both school and university. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So what did you what did you do once you got out of university, like for a job? What was your background? Well, uh, I then uh, pretty much forced out of sailing for a while because I, I'm an engineer uh, and I went off to run drilling rigs around the world in pretty antisocial places, uh, North Africa, <laughs> uh, Syria, and nice spell in South Africa with a bit of sailing, but uh, but generally so what, at all for about 10 years. What era was that? What, what timeline? 20 years ago? That would have been uh, a little bit more than that, Don. Um, <laughs> 82 to uh, 82 to 90 and a bit, 90, 92 odd. Okay, that's cool. All right, so so then you came back to England after that, and and uh, you know how did what happened then? You get back into sailing in England. You you started a business or what? Yeah, a bit 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 of spell in France. Uh, did business school in France and met a bunch of people there. Uh, and then came back to the UK, and yeah, that's when sailing really started again. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was then moved to from polluting to become a uh, an environmental cleanup uh, guy, <laughs> cleaning up some of the mess I've been creating for the previous fifteen years. Yeah, okay. And and so then uh, I know you had a. You, I mean, I, I, you've given me some photos here, and I know you're into minis and. And all the rest of it, but which came first? Because you, you you pretty quickly got into short-handed sailing, right? Like double-handed and all the rest of it. Yeah, pretty much straight away. So the first boat was a bit of a family boat because I had three young daughters at the time, and so that was the Sigma Thirty Three, which you haven't got a photo of, and yeah. that was great. 
it's a one design fleet and uh, but not a huge pleasure to sail because it's a yeah bit more the long keeled ones that were about to start sailing yeah uh, and, uh, that got transitioned into uh, a mini um which is back to sailing dinghies but uh, wrong so, I, so you so you got I'm into your mini i'm going to put two pictures up here of of, of you and your mini hang on I'll, I'm not working with a mouse and I've got a sticky keyboard. So this is your 650 for the transatlantic. That's right. So that was 20, 2000 to 2001. So the picture on the right of the screen is actually, uh, I mean, is, is, is during the race. So we'd had a yeah. really a hellish 36, 48 hours through Biscay, but luckily with the wind behind. So it was a pretty, yeah. pretty amazing sail to, to the Northwest of Spain. And then that picture was taken from a Coast Guard vessel uh, just as we were sort of recovering. So I'm, I'm looking a bit disheveled uh, and uh, still in my foulies uh, and just getting the boat back up to speed again around, uh, around the corner of Spain. Yeah, so what uh, year was this again? What year? This was... That's 2001, the race. Yeah, okay. And so how many entrants were sailing in that one? Uh, it was the year after 1999 when they got hit by real storms and a whole bunch of people got rescued so they restricted the number of entries down to 64 i think yeah um yeah yeah and and so how did you go at the end of the race well it was great i mean rather unexpectedly i ended up on the podium uh finishing second because <laughs> i was full-time working i was a real amateur uh i mean everyone's an amateur but some people sail full-time and are amateurs and others work and I was, what, what, I was, what made you transition from normal mini. sailing into the mini? What, what was the attraction to get into that? Uh, uh, well, for, for starters, if you sail the Sigma 33 for a while, uh, you're really yearning to get back into dinghies and something that when the wind gets up, it actually goes faster. So <laughs> a, a mini fitted that bill. And I met, yeah. uh, I met Paul Peggs, one of the competitors who was exhibiting at the London Boat Show. And... Uh, yeah, talking to him, I just got inspired. And so, how were you? What age were you then? Back then, what what age? Uh, just in my forties. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so yeah, my... yeah. That, that's a midlife crisis situation. You know, know all about that. <laughs> yeah. So, what's the deal yeah. with this this other boat here? Okay, so when I got back from the mini, I needed to trade the Sigma in for something a little more performant. So that's the J one hundred and five designed as a lake boat from the States, but it's a really fantastic boat to sail. And it does remarkably well in rough weather as well. And yeah. it's, it's nice to sail single-handed and two-handed. Yeah, and so yeah. that's what you were doing? Yeah, photos taken at the start of a race from Cowes round Edison Lighthouse and back. And it was yeah. a bit of a story, as you can see in the photo. Uh, and uh, eventually all but three of the competitors uh, packed in, so. Uh, yeah. So, so so you actually cleaned up there and that's your daughter right so so where did you come in that race well we uh, that's nikki <laughs> 23 at the time uh, yeah. we uh, we won uh, the two-handed class not surprisingly we we're the only finisher we also won our class and uh, and the overall trophy so oh, we uh, right. cleaned up on that one and so then she followed you and got into minis right so she became a yeah. 50 sailor I mean, all my daughters uh, are very keen sailors, but Nikki got the bug of offshore sailing. And yeah, she did the mini and, well, had, had a bash, but got on the waiting list, but couldn't get in in 2013 and then, and then got in in a proto in 2015. So, when did, the, so uh, when did you first hear about the Golden Globe race? Not the first edition, the second edition. And, and, and how did that transition into an idea of doing it? Well, I wasn't particularly quick on the uptake and circumstances weren't right, certainly to do 2018. But when I heard that it was going to be repeated in 2022, uh, everything fell into place. So, yeah. yeah. So, and, so, um, and what was the attraction? What, why? <laughs> well, I mean, the first attraction was that, I mean, I, I was, I suppose, about eight or something like that when uh, Chichester went around the world with a stop. And I mean, I just set the goal. I was going to do it at some stage. And yeah. then I said about... 10 years ago, the realization dawned that with, with everybody moving into Vonde, the Yomoko 60s and things, it just wasn't going to happen. And then, yeah. of course, some crazy man set up the Golden Globe <laughs> and, uh, and the rest is history. So I'm now an entry. 
Okay, so you traded in the old boat and you bought the Biscay. Because you've had that for a while. You had that before you entered, right? The Biscay? No, I well, I got it as I was entering. So I didn't quite trade it in. So I yeah. couldn't quite up with the 105 just then. Yeah. And the 105 has just gone in the last few months. Yeah. Gone to Denmark. Oh, okay, so you've been a multiple boat person. <laughs> so yeah, now you're entering, a, you're entering the Biscay 36, which is kind of cool. And uh, it, it's a good one. You, you don't need to do a super major refit, eh? Just tell us a bit about no, the boat and why you got that boat. Well, it was available. And I had a look at all the boats that uh, were approved at that stage. And the Russell is an obvious chance, but I'm not great for going for the obvious. And, and also, it's quite a lot more expensive. Uh, yeah. And this one, I mean, for starters, it was built where I live in the UK, in Emsworth, uh, which, yeah. which is quite attractive. It hadn't raced hard at all, hadn't done done an awful lot, so it's in very good condition. Been very well maintained by yeah. previous owners. Yeah. Uh, so it just needs a little bit of work. Uh, yeah. It needs to, to conform with the re requirements for the Golden Globe. Needs new yeah. rigging. It's going to yeah. have the wheel ripped out of it and a tiller because I, I can't steer with a wheel. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you all the way on that one. Anyway, so you guys are going to have a great race, but we lost Daniel last week, which is kind of sad. You know, that means you, we had three, which is perfect, but now you're back to two. Yeah, it's a great shame to lose Daniel, but I can fully understand his reasons. I mean, young family. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. The average age of the fleet, the skippers now, has gone up again, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is a bit sad, yeah. but there you go. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so you're in the midst of a, in the midst of a refit. Uh, and you, you're lobbed onto a hydrovane as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can see in the picture on the right, the old Aries. I mean, it was uh, probably original to the boat, so getting on a bit and need a lot yeah. of work. And it really yeah, yeah. the idea of having, firstly, an emergency rudder, but also getting the, getting the steering a bit further aft to give a bit more control. So yeah, that's a, hydrovane, yeah, that, so that, that's, that's just gone on last week. Yeah, uh, okay. Holding props just gone on, so uh, we're getting 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 her in shape. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, I'm so we sort of know what's going on. Here. Yeah, and and so right now, I should just you you you're busy with your uh, with your canal boats. We've got to talk about this later because I've always <laughs> wanted to do a trip on the canals. <laughs> so that's well, there your. You go. You're in the right country. And, yeah, that's your occupation now, and, and so so you you're putting everything into the GGR. Um, you've got a sailing family. What did the sa what did the family think at when you decided to do it, and when did you tell them that you were going to do it? Well, I don't think any of the family are particularly surprised, and they're pretty encouraging, or at least they're saying so to me. It was a bit of a shock to Claire, who's uh, <laughs> who who knew there might be one more little uh, thing like this coming up sometime soon. It was a total surprise, but everyone's been very supportive. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, all right, so let's get into some word associations and we'll find out who you really are. You know the deal, I'm going to throw some words and you just hit me with the first thing that comes to mind, okay? Books. Books. Might be reading a few more than I am at the moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, time. Time, never enough. Um, winner. Winner. Oh, but it was two years ago I started on this venture. Yeah, yeah, okay. Winner. Winner, I think we're all winners in this uh, this event. Winners participating. Yeah, fear. Fear. Um, yeah, adrenaline. Isn't that funny? I was just going to say adrenaline is your next word, so the answer would be fear. fear. <laughs> <laughs> Vendee Globe. Vendee Globe. I mean, that's that's the Formula One. I mean, uh, hats off to them, but it's uh, it's 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 not for me. Budget and uh, and the technology and everything. It's. Uh, it's a different event. Yeah. Dreams. Dreams. That's, you got to have them. That's what life's about. Cape Horn. Cape Horn. That's the Everest. That's, that's the goal. Sponsors. Sponsors. Yeah. Um, be very nice, but there's a mutual responsibility there. And uh, it's time to start uh, seeing what I can do for them and what maybe they could do for me. Panic. Panic. Not doesn't happen really too much. Um, <laughs> hopefully, mother, mother, um, parent, ma mother. Yeah, support. Yeah, cold. Did you say cold or cold? Cold, cold, as in freezing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to get cold. Um, I'm not too fussed about the cold. Can dress for that. 
Money. Never enough, but it's, um, it's only a means to an end. Robin Knox Johnson. Nah, there's, a, there's an inspiration. Yeah, cool. Okay. All right. Pick a, these are the question time now. Pick a number between one and ten. Well, it's going to have to be four because that's my boat. Four. Where did you grow up and was it happy? I grew up all over the place. I was born in Kielder, right up in Northumberland, in uh, north, of, uh, north of the UK, uh, and then moved every two years after that. And yeah, it was, it was, it was happy. Yeah, good. Uh, 10 to 20? Uh, 12. 12. To date, what is the best thing you've ever done, apart from entering the Golden Globe? Well, I was going to say, apart from uh, family things, um, getting into offshore short-handed racing. Yeah, okay. Uh, 20 to 30? Uh, 24. 24. How often do you doodle and what? You know what doodle is? I think that's an Australian yeah, word. Yeah, I know what doodle what, is. Not I having a fee, you know, but actually doodling. You know, da -da -da. <laughs> Yeah, I don't doodle a lot. Yeah? I sketch out things that are that, that for the boat and things, but I don't really doodle. No. Yep, okay. Uh, 30 to 40? Uh, 40. 40, that's on the other page. Uh, how do you deal with stress? Um... Manage it, work through it. A bit of stress is good. Too much isn't so good. Uh, if I get very stressed, I'll go and do something a bit energetic. I'll go and uh, run or cycle or, or go to sea or mow the lawn or something. Or scream or something, you know. Yeah, yeah I'll maybe scream. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, uh, 40 to 47. You've already had 40, yeah. 44. 44. If something happened and you lost everything, what would you do? Start again. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, start again. Okay, cool. Here comes the tricky one now. You've got to pick a letter between A and N. N. Go for N. N. If a man, if, if a man, if a man evolved from monkey, how come we still have them? Oh, if man evolved from monkeys, how come we still have them? <laughs> oh, there's room for both of those. I mean, after all, Golden I need plenty of them every day. Don't worry. <laughs> Golden Globes around still, isn't it? And uh, yeah. and the Vendée yeah. Globe evolved from that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's cool. Uh, all right. So let's. Uh, we've got uh, John has turned up on the side. He's uh, sitting underneath his brand new mast at the moment, inside his boat, which is a really cool nick. Um, so he'll pop up in two seconds. We'll say good day. Uh, good day, John. We've got half of you there. Hey, there man. it is. <laughs> You've only got half of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you Hi, can John. hear Simon, yeah. Hey, Simon. Yep, okay, a bit soft, but it looks good. That's a cool-looking boat. Nicholson's are always uh, nice and cruisy inside. What's the picture behind you? It's, As if uh, I don't know. Robin Knox Johnson. <laughs> so did you put that picture in there or was it on the boat when you bought it? I won it. You I won, won it? it? Um, yeah, um, it was um, hosting the Clipper Meal here in um, Liverpool. And we all bought some raffle tickets. I went to the toilet and I came back and it was in my space. I won it. That's well, I, cool. I, I wasn't there. <laughs> Is that an omen or what? <laughs> um, I hope so. Okay. So you're the you're to the best of my knowledge, you're the first GGR skipper ever to be dismastered before the event, <laughs> right? <laughs> so tell people what happened. You know, in, in short, a short definition of what happened. So, short definition. Um, it was two days before I was supposed to set off around the UK. I came out to have um, a new prop fitted, and um, the winds came in um, that night and just blew over the boat. It yeah. was really bad winds. So it was on the hard. So it fell on the hard, hit another boat beside it, broke in half, and uh, yeah. nine months later, you finally got a new mast two days ago or something. Yep. Yeah. Um, it came last Thursday, so a week ago. Yeah, it's an amazing story. I mean, it was a bit of bad luck, but at the same time, you got a brand new mask. So, you know, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to be, we'll talk to you in depth um, uh, next week. Okay. So we don't, we don't need to go to it too far, but you, you where, where are you at the moment? Oh, besides on your boat. Yeah. Um, I'm still in, in, in Liverpool, but I'm going to be moving in two weeks. Yeah. Okay. And I'm intrigued to know, it looks like you had a beard trim, especially for the show today. Um, that was done a, a few weeks ago. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, okay. We're delayed. That's fine. All right. So, um, so okay. So, uh, I usually ask the question, uh, Simon, uh, and this might be a bit obvious, but why do you think, Simon, that you're going to beat John in his Nicholson 32? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I've probably got a bit of extra waterline length advantage. But yeah. From that, uh, you know, anyone can win this race. Um, I mean, I'll be going, I guess, John, well, you'll be asking John why, what, what takes him around. I'll be going Yeah, around. get angry. Get, get, get brutal because he's going to go back at you in a minute. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I guess the objective of all of us is to get round, and uh, I'll be trying to get round as quickly as possible. And, and my competitive nature means that once I'm out there, I'll be racing. Yeah, you know, I always remember from 18, uh, Loic Lepage on his Nick 32, uh, it was flying. There was a, one of the, when he pulled into Cape Town, some locals went out and met him and shot that video clip of him sailing. And it was, it was hooting and very average winds and the motion of the boat was really cool. I really think the Nick 32 is, 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 can sail right up to its, its uh, capacity. You know, it, it's a bit of a sleeping giant in some ways, but who knows? You've got to have a good skipper to do that. So why, John, are you going to beat Simon? Are you up for well, the challenge? I don't think I'm in a race with the rest of the skippers. I'm in a race with myself, and I just want to get us round as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was going to ask you, you're happy with the boat, but you haven't sailed it much. So you're going to have a hectic time in the next couple of years, eh? Um, the next year, I'm hoping to do the rest of my miles and just get it all um, done in one year. Um, it sh most of it should have been done now, but with COVID, I think everyone's been stuck in, in M side, you know, and not been able to get out to to um, their boats. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, I I could get to my boat, but I didn't have a mast. So I go <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't be laughing. It was a really sad story. But at the same time, there was quite a few funny things happening. Eh? Oh, God, and, yes. uh, you know, I, normally I'd say it's the luck of the Irish, but you're British, so that, you know, that that's fine. I think we're all glad to see you finally got a mask. It's a good one. Selden mask is okay. I mean, we lost a few in the GGR, which really confused me um, And uh, in the last edition. But anyway, hopefully the things will uh, be a lot smoother next time. So, um, okay, so that's all cool. So um, let's see. So, uh, Simon, your um, your biggest fear uh, at the moment, assuming you've already started in the race, okay, and you're now underway, what's your biggest fear about about the GGR? I mean, the, the biggest fear is not completing the circuit for whatever yeah. reason. I mean, uh, it could be through illness, it could be through misfortune, or, or yeah, bad, bad performance. But the biggest fear is not not completing it because that's the goal yeah uh, so if you did it, if for whatever whatever misfortune you didn't do it would you come back again the next edition <laughs> well i have to be careful what i say because i have promised yes. okay <laughs> that's it's one -off. <laughs> yeah it's yeah okay and and the biggest challenge for you now because you seem to be pretty organized you're you know you've got an interesting sailing background and done quite a bit of sailing you've got a sensible boat and i'd have to say you're one of our uh, what would say one of our thinkers one of our conservative guys um so, so what's your um, uh, what, what's your you know, the fun factor? What's the biggest thing that drove it drove you into the into the uh, GGR? You know, not the well, fun factor. Yeah, the biggest passionate thing. Why are you doing it? You know, you know it was on. You said I've got to do it, but why? Try and answer that. I know it's impossible, but well, it's 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 the Everest. It's it's the thing. I mean, that's for, from my age group era. That's that's the thing to do. Single handed round the world, but the capes. Uh, that's that's what drives. Um, yeah, that's that's it. But then, like, I, I, I always say that many of us, most people, want to have a life-defining moment. And I'd say doing the minis at forty that wasn't bad. So is this yeah. this this you consider this to be, uh, you know, the biggest deal? You know. Well, it's it's yeah yeah it's 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 bigger than the mini. I mean, the mini turned out bigger than I expected it to. That was uh, as you say that. that that's a midlife crisis one. This is the this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's cool. Okay. So so now I'm going to try and define what do you think will be the best fun about the GGR, either before, during, or after. What's the what's the things that what, it's going to be really fun? Something you're really looking forward to, and don't say finishing. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean finishing is obvious, but uh, but uh, but the people uh, because that's what what the mini was all about, and a big surprise to me. Um, was just how friendly everybody was within the organisation and the participants, and I'm expecting that 
well, I'm already experiencing that with the GGR. It's just just an amazing community of people. Uh, yeah. that's the most fun thing because let's face it a lot of the sailing is not going to be that fun i mean it's not, it's not <laughs> fun to sail <laughs> and some of the conditions uh some of the conditions will be pretty pretty poor so it's it's not the fun of the sailing it's uh, the achievement of the community yeah it's the shared adventure i've had that on you know we've done a lot of adventures non-racing sailing stuff but sailing adventures we have 10 or 12 people involved you know and it's that shared sort of challenge and the hardship you go through and the worse it gets sometimes the louder you laugh when you've got a group of people you know it gets very yeah. obscure quiet left field monty python you know um so um it's so, okay john so what's what's your uh, most pressing challenge now to get to the start uh, besides money and sailing time and uh, finding the right clothes and having the right beard trim? <laughs> um, I think it's just finding the, the right sponsors. I think um, we're all going to be hard pressed because we've not worked for six months or so. And it's two years. It's just going to fly by. And we, we've got to make sure everything's going to be perfect for when we, we um, start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna peel you off now, John, because I don't want to let too much out of the bag. You know, we've already told the world you've got a new mast and and uh, happy to get it up at last and all those sorts of things. So uh, we'll see you next week, and uh, we we'll look forward to it. That'll be fun. Okay. Hopefully, you will have gone for a sail by then with your new mast. I hope so. <laughs> when when are you scheduling to go sailing now? It's, Just around um, the around the block. I'm moving the boat in two weeks' time to Whitehaven. Yeah. So um, I'll have a um, two-week sale, um, you know, off test sales before I move. But um, I've been waiting for six weeks to start work again, and my two jobs are next week. My first job. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't okay. sail in because I'm working. Okay. Well, I won't even say what you do. I know what you do, but we'll, we'll work all that out next week. Okay. Good to chat, John. I'll uh, I'll peel you off the side there now, and I'll carry on with Simon. So thanks for coming up, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Bye now. Yep. Bye, John. Bye, Simon. Okay. So, so, um, what's your timelines now, Simon? How are you putting together between now and the start? Like, what's the program and, and training and things like that? Well, the immediate immediate program is uh, I'm going to go sailing once once we've uh, closed down the riverboat operation, which is the end of this month. Then yep. the plan is to go sailing, and if uh, if the boat all holds together and the hydrovane works, then I will try and do my qualifier in October. I'm just looking at all those uh, cyclones coming in at the moment, and, uh, and yeah, weather's a bit crazy, eh? Yeah, <laughs> I've been I've been watching the, you know, I've been imagining the course. I put a post up about it. I just follow. It's a great way to follow the weather, you know, in, in like virtual time, you know, going around as if the fleet was going around, and it'll be interesting to see what happens in the Southern Ocean because we'll be two months later, and yeah. uh, I'm quite looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a good thing to do. So and so, uh, where are you planning to go in, in the qualifier? October's a good time. It'll be a bit windy, you know. Yeah, that's a, that's the plan. So uh, out into the Atlantic, sort of maybe up towards Ireland, maybe down down to the uh, northwest of Spain. No, yep. Not a particular target. I'm going to look at the weather a bit. So how's your sextant routine? Are you on the program now? Or? Uh, <laughs> it's it's got a bit of refreshing to do. Of course, I had to do it for the mini. Uh, yeah. Not in earnest, but um, so I'm, I'm part way through refreshing. I need to get yeah, out yeah. and use it. But That's cool. And what yeah, about yeah. Uh, what about your sails and stuff? What what's your sail wardrobe going to be? And have okay. you got good sails on the boat? Are you getting a new set or some new sails? Or no, the the, the rig's got to go. And I mean, the rig is original. So um, the boat I'm going to put it in the yard in November. Touchwood, and going to do all the bulkhead changes and reinforcing. Uh, chain plates and all that sort of stuff and try and get the tiller on at that stage and yeah. then when it comes out of the yard it uh, it should have a new mast and new sails yeah new sails okay um and so how's the support team and your whole family coming along all the daughters are going to be there you know packing you up and kicking you off the dock oh i'm sure they'll be there yeah hopefully uh, yeah yeah we will get a few few people on for the prologue if that's uh, if that's all allowed depending on how things go and sponsors yeah. and things yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it'll be a similar program to last time. So, um, so that's cool. And so, are you on seriously on the hunt for sponsors, or it's a secondary thing, or it'd be nice if yeah. you could? No, um, I'll, I'll start starting the hunt. I mean, I felt probably what I need to do is 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 build the program, get some sea miles, get get uh, get a bit more of a CV out there, boat CV out there, and now's the time. So this autumn, 
starting starting the sponsor hunt. See. Yeah. Oh, geez, I just realized I haven't been following for questions. Normally, Jane's here telling me what's going on. Uh, <laughs> Mike, Mike, and, Mike and Gay Lewis were on time today. That's cool. Uh, Guy De Boer, has Simon been sailing his boat yet? Or you've been sailing it, right? I, I sailed it uh, back at the beginning of July, and then since that, she's been out of the water because it's just been too busy yeah. with, with all the work. Well, Guru's, Guru's also said I look quite cute. I look different. That's because of the light. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, I haven't lost much weight yet, but it's on the program. Um, stiff competition, you're right. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on there. Uh, oh, new, dark, new glasses. That's what it is. Uh, Ada just yeah. mentioned this. New cool French groovy glasses. The other ones were also cool French groovy glasses. And I've got a blue set. Uh, these are not prescription glasses. They're 15 euro in the chemist shop. And they're plastic and they work really well. So uh, that's what looks different, Euro. Uh, very well spotted. And I forgot about that as well. Uh, Daniel's out. Yeah, that was really sad. Guy was just mentioning that. We're all disappointed. But he'll be back in 26. Uh, Guy de Boer, yeah, they're narrow boats for your canal business, right, Simon? They're a bit bigger than narrow boats. They're wider, so they're twice the width of a narrow boat. They're actually Dutch motor chalks, and uh, and we've got some uh, Dutch vedettes, the sort of classic steel cruisers. But those are the, the one in that picture was actually the hull dates from 1900. It's a riveted, originally wow. a riveted hull. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to get it up again here, uh, just to. Remind everyone, but it's lost in oh, there it is, lost in the waterway. Um, uh, who was asking me? Uh, I think it's Gurav was saying, "What's the most important piece of gear on your boat for the GGR?" Uh, I'd like to say it was me, but it's probably the hydrovane. <laughs> okay, I'll take that as a good answer. Um, okay, greetings from Trisha's there, Guy de Boer, uh, the guy. Go to hello, John. Uh, Gurev, uh, Mike Thay, but they can pronounce it. Yeah. Oh, it's not Gurev. It's Gairo. Holy dooly. <laughs> Sorry, Gurev. Uh, Gairo, uh, missed the start. Charles, you know, you can follow it and replay. And um, put Ada on video. <laughs> she's like Jane. She wants to hide sometimes. So, so she's sitting in the seat over there. Uh, we set up these props here before. And um, you big guy, just stick your head up. Oh, she's a big child. Yeah, stick your head up and say good day. Um, because Jane Don't never wants to be on camera either. So, yeah. say hello, say hello. There's there's an Ada in the same quick, quick appearance. Um, Ada's going to be one of our big time volunteers uh, here with the GGR, and she's working professionally on the OGR and helping with the mini as well. So, um, uh, it's all kind of cool. And they, and as I mentioned, if you go hunting for those that are interested, they had the uh, Vendee Globe live press conference. Uh, which went for an hour, like an hour and a half or something. Uh, Yannick was there, but all of the key guys did it by video to stay quarantined from COVID. And it's quite interesting to watch. It's, uh, I was English, logged straight on, and you had real-time live translation in English. So if you were French and got on, you would have got got the French voice. If you're German, because there's a German entry, you've probably got German translation. So it's pretty cool. So everything's about the Vendee here in the Savalone at the moment. But later on, uh, certainly Aida will be covering stuff for her La Saab's TV thing, but we'll also do some live GGR from the from the dock here in in uh, La Saab for the Vendee. It's going to be quite exciting. So uh, all kind of cool. All right, that's great, Simon. Good to chat. Um, anything? Two things. Anything? Or first of all, if you could change one thing with the GGR, what would it be? Not sure. There's much I'd want to change. It's uh, it's oh, that's uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's fitting the bill. Yeah, okay. Um, so maybe, maybe avoid going into Cape Town, but uh, that's... Uh, yeah, it's a challenge, but Matessia did it. Yeah. And, and, you know, whilst yeah. uh, Sir Robin's always there with Sue Haley, we're going to try and focus a bit of the story on Matessia this time and Joshua. Um, and he went in, he got, went right up there and, and it'll be fun, you know, it'll be fun. <laughs> so, but challenging, yes, I agree. Yeah. Uh, I was getting back out again. Yeah, yeah, we may have a rounding mark there. Okay, so um, uh, anything else particularly you want to say to people while, you, while you've got the, got the, the mic? No, um, just uh, looking forward to uh, getting going and uh, enjoying the support from everybody there online. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 
I think it's going to grow. You know, we, we're obviously, uh, you know, we've got thousands and thousands of people out there, but, but we're still two years from the start. But we still get solid following on what's happening. But as it gets closer, everyone will be back on board for sure. So, and we're so lucky with the, with the pandemic, you know, we're two years out, which is kind of nice. So uh, all very good. Okay, that's it. I'm going to say thank you, Simon, and we'll see you again. Um, I think we're going to meet up sometime between now and the start of the Monday. Eh? We have to do lunch. <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, look yeah. forward to it. Okay, cool. Thanks, Simon. We'll see you later. Good. Thanks, Don. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, so uh, that was kind of cool. I'm just looking for the – everything's slower. I haven't got a mouse, and now I can't find the closing frame. But um, thanks, Ada, for this internet time and uh, uh, troubleshooting and reminding me about a few things. And we'll see you again next week. See you later.